Welcome to ECE 320 Electronics 1. In this lecture, we're going to be covering the syllabus and introducing you to what the course is all about. Now, starting out, what are electronics? Electronics are basically devices made out of semiconductors. That is typically silicon or germanium. In this class, we'll focus on silicon. In general, these devices are nonlinear. That makes the circuit analysis much, much harder. That makes this one of the harder course, courses in the EC curriculum. What you wind up doing in this class is trying to solve n equations for n unknowns, but the n equations are, are nonlinear. So we'll be using various techniques and tricks to come up with approximate solutions. And we'll be using a thing called Circuit Lab to check our answers. Finally, build it in lab to really get, check your answers. Note that this is a junior level course. At the junior level, one problem students have is students don't know what they don't know. So typically at the junior level, what we do is introduce a whole bunch of different things you can do. In this class, we've got 24 lectures. So likewise, we're going to be covering 24 different things you can do with electronics. And the electronics courses at NTSU are two of them. There's 320 Digital Electronics and 321 Analog Electronics. Now, the course content, what we're going to be doing is starting out with just silicon. Now, silicon is an insulator at zero degrees Kelvin. It conducts above zero degrees Kelvin. What that means is I can build a temperature sensor. If I measure the resistance of silicon, I can tell you what the temperature is. In addition with the silicon, I can dope it. Basically, add atoms of boron or phosphorus. That changes the, the conductivity of the silicon. Um, and with that, I can make a resistor. Now, depending upon what I dope it with, be it boron or phosphorus, I can make it so that the charge carriers, instead of just being electrons, I have two types. I can make it a positive charge carrier, p-type silicon, and I can make it n-type silicon, negative charge carriers. And that's what makes semiconductors so different than metals. With semiconductors, they've got two types of charge carriers. Following that, we'll look at what happens if I take those two types of silicon and put them back, back to back, giving you a PN junction. Well, when you have a PN junction, I get a diode. A diode is a, an electronic device that lets current flow in only one direction. With diodes, you can build reverse polarity production. So if I stick my battery in backwards, I don't kill my device. I can build an LED and produce light. I can build an AC to DC converter, like this circuit, and AC signal becomes a DC signal at the load. I can find the maximum and minimum of different voltages. And I can build clippers, such as implement Y equals squared of X in hardware. So those are some of the things we'll cover with diodes. If I take the silicon and put the types together, I can do NPN or PNP when I have three types. That makes a bipolar junction or BJT transistor. Um, essentially, transistors are current controlled current devices. With them, I can build an electronic switch, turn a motor on or off. I can build an H bridge, have something wimpy like a microprocessor, turn a motor full forward on, turn it off, make it go in full reverse. I can build DC to DC converters, convert 12 volts DC down to 5 volts DC. I can build NAND, NOR, and NOT gates. And I can also build amplifiers. Uh, note that this class 320 is digital electronics. Amplifiers are analog. We'll be doing that in ECE 321. If I stick four of those types of materials, P-type and N-type, back to back, I get a semiconductor relay. A semiconductor relay is a diode I can turn on and off. So rather than just doing a full bridge rectifier, I can do a full bridge rectifier that turns on at 45 degrees. By changing the on time, I can change the average of the DC voltage. So this builds is an AC to DC converter where I have an adjustable DC output. And finally, we're going to look at MOSFETs. If I have a PNP type semiconductor with a gate, I get a P-channel MOSFET. NPN plus a gate, I get an N-channel MOSFET. Essentially, a MOSFET is a voltage-controlled resistor. With a MOSFET, I can build an electronic switch, turn a device on and off. I can build an H-bridge, have a device go full forward, off, and reverse. 
and I can also build CMOS logic. CMOS logic is how computers actually work. I can take my output and either pull it high to 5 volts or pull it to ground. It gives me my binary output, digital outputs. I'm using ideally zero current when it's high or low. So those are some of the things we'll be covering in this class. Basically, stuff you can do with p-type and n-type semiconductors, stuff you can do with silicon. Now, in terms of course information, uh, I'm Jake Lauer. Class meets Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, the labs, this class has open labs. There's no scheduled lab times. The labs you can do in ECE room 211, 237. You can also do them at home. And note that the labs are part of the homework sets. Typically, for each homework set, I'll do a paper design, or you'll do a paper design. Check your paper design in Circuit Lab, and then build it in hardware. Verify the voltages and currents that you calculated and simulated are correct. Those you can do either of these three places, in the EC department or at home. We'll talk about the, the lab component a little bit. Now, my office hours are Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. in ECE room 201, as well as on Zoom. And the Zoom links send out a little bit later uh, by the start of the semester. In terms of the bulletin description, there's actually two electronics courses. Digital electronics is 320. Analog electronics, 321. It's basically the study of semiconductors, what you can do with them. And this course with a binary output, motors on or off, full forward, full reverse. In 321, you can do analog outputs, have the motor accelerate, decelerate, go backwards, output a sine wave. In terms of the objectives for EC320, by the end of the semester, you should be able to explain how current flows in a semiconductor via holes and electrons. Again, that's what makes semiconductors unique. I've got two types of charge carriers, not just one. I should be able, you should be able to explain how diodes and transistors operate. You should be able to design, analyze, build, test, and demonstrate diode circuits using nonlinear and ideal diode models, transistor circuits with binary outputs, and op-amp circuits with binary outputs. Now, in terms of what you need to take this class, you're going to need a calculator that can do complex numbers. Anytime you're dealing with AC signals, you need complex numbers, and we'll be doing that in this class. I recommend the HP35. Most students use the TI-84. You can also use Pre-42. Uh, Pre-42 is an app on your cell phone. Uh, let's do right here. Uh, the Pre-42 is, in my opinion, the best calculator ever built, the HP42 calculator. It's $200 on eBay, a free app on your cell phone. Uh, what calculator you use is totally up to you, but make sure you can do complex analysis with complex numbers. You need an ability to make videos. On the homeworks, the last part of the homework is typically build and demonstrate your device. A good way to demonstrate it is to make a short little 20 second video. You're going to need a Circuit Lab account. Now, Circuit Lab is a drag and drop program where you can build a circuit, simulate it, find the voltages and currents. It's really friendly, really easy to use. Um, I really like it. It's one way to check if your analysis is right. And the final way to check is to actually build the circuit in lab. Now, if you're doing the labs on campus, all the equipment should be in room 211, 227, 237. If you want to do the labs off campus, you're going to need a multimeter, you know, something that can read DC, AC voltages. You'll need an electronics kit from Amazon that's got resistors, capacitors, breadboard. You need a couple extra parts. I'll have those outside my office, ECE 201. That's things like a speaker, transistor, a 555 timer. And you need a power supply. What I would suggest is go scavenge through the junk drawer at your house. Almost every house has a junk drawer with old power supplies. Find one that's got something between 6 volts DC and 16 volts DC. You can also use a 9 volt battery. In terms of grading in this class, grading 
will be the average of weekly quizzes, homework, and your final exam. And grading is rounded to the nearest 1%. Um, here I'll round down, but not round up. So if you have a 90%, guaranteed you have an A. 89, maybe, maybe not, depends on, upon the curve. The reason for that is if you work in a group and everybody learns the material, everybody demonstrates their ability on the homework, on the quizzes, in the labs, on the final, I'm happy to give out all A's. Uh, well, working together on the homework. Quizzes are individual effort. Final exam is individual effort. But if everybody learns it and individually demonstrates knowledge on the quizzes and final, I'm happy to give out all A's. The textbook for this course is Bison Academy. Go to Bison Academy. These are the courses that I teach in ECE. Click on 320. That'll take you to the 320 website. It's free. It's what most students use. It's available to all current and former students in the class. So likewise, it's also a good reference if later on, like senior design, you want to go back and figure out how something works. If you'd like a textbook, there's plenty of good books on electronics. The edition doesn't really matter. The game the publishers play is they change the homework problems each year, so you have to buy the new version. Well, I don't use the homework problems from the textbook, so that doesn't matter. In terms of content, Diodes, transistors, MOSFETs, they work the same in 1970 as they work today, so the addition doesn't matter. Buy the cheapest one available. Uh, for example, microelectronic circuits, the used version is $9, the new is $200. Buy the used version. In terms of lab kits, if you'd like to do the labs at home or you'd like to have your own breadboard, they are, I think, $18 on Amazon. Uh, what that includes is your wires, your breadboard, push buttons, capacitors, LEDs, resistors, speaker. Uh, pretty pretty good kits for 18 bucks. Think of it like a textbook that you actually use. You're going to need a few extra components. Those will be outside my office, uh, free to pick up. Um, you'll also need a, a multimeter, some way to measure voltage. For other things, like measuring frequency, you can use your cell phone. Uh, cell phones make pretty good, uh, pretty good sensors. The, you can download a oscilloscope app, app, a frequency counter app, a signal generator app, a lot of things you can do with your cell phone. In terms of the syllabus, if you go to a Bison Academy and click on 320 Electronics, Something similar to this shows up. What this has is the, the class laid out on a daily basis. So here's the topics we're covering each day. Under lecture, these are PDF files with the, the lecture in landscape and portrait format. Uh, portrait is nice for printing out and reading. Landscape is nice for class presentations. All lectures have been recorded and posted on YouTube. These are the links to the YouTube files. There's also a YouTube playlist if you want to binge watch, invite your friends and neighbors over, have a great time. If there's a handout in class, these are the handouts that we go over. And the homeworks are also posted on Bison Academy. Now, on the homeworks, these are due the following Monday. Unless Monday is a holiday, then they're due on Wednesday. Once the homework has been posted, I'll put, or once the homework's been turned in, I'll post the solutions. Homework is due before the solutions are posted because it kind of takes the challenge out of doing the homework once the solutions are posted. Typically what we'll do is have the homework due on Monday, go over the homework on Wednesday, quiz on Thursday. The quiz covers that homework set. The purpose of the quiz is to make sure that everybody doing the homework knows how to do, the, how to do it. If you're working in groups, you're not giving moral support or if you, everybody in the group at least understands the material. If you got stuck on the homework, there is also solutions to the homework sets from previous semesters posted on Bison Academy. This makes a nice study aid if you get stuck, don't know how to do a problem. Go to homework sets and solutions and see what we did previous semesters. Now I change the homework problems every semester, so the answers will be different, but the approach should be the same 
the MATLAB CircuitLab circuits would be similar. Um, should help you get, get through the homework. These solutions are posted both as a PDF file as well as a YouTube file. The YouTube was for the online students where I go over the homework, but everybody has access to that. There's also the quizzes from previous semesters. The quiz, the quiz solution, and going over the quiz as a YouTube video. These are useful for studying for quizzes for this semester, as well as studying for the final. One of the more fun things, or funner things about Bison Academy are, is the section called Best of 320. Now, typically on the homework sets, I'll ask you to design on paper, simulate in circuit lab, build and then demonstrate in hardware. One way to demonstrate is to make a YouTube video. That's something I recommend. The better videos where the students gave me permission are linked on Bison Academy, so you can see what other people did in previous semesters. Um, YouTube videos are also nice. We've had, or I've had feedback from employers. They would like to see copies of your work. So like if you're an art major, you have a portfolio where you show off what you've done over the last four years. You can do the same thing in engineering, but your portfolio will be your class projects. Make YouTube videos of your various class projects, put them on your resume, and employers will link on them. We'll click on them. Mentioned earlier that there are weekly quizzes. There's no midterms in the class. There's just too much material to cover. So instead, we have a weekly quiz. Quiz number one covers homework one. Quiz number two covers the topics on homework two, three and four and so on. The quizzes are typically on Thursday or Friday. They're similar to the homework problems with different numbers. If you can do the homework, you should be able to do the quiz. Quizzes can be done in person, in which case there are six questions, answer the problems in any order. You can also do the quizzes on Blackboard. On Blackboard, there's a two hour time limit. The quiz can be started anytime between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Each quiz is different such as they'll have a resistor that's your birth date. So you start with like 514 ohms and analyze the circuit uh, from there. That makes grading harder, but I find I have to do that with online quizzes. Quizzes are also random order, no backtracking. So you'll get six questions random order. You have to do the first problem before you go on to the second, finish the second problem before you go on to the third. Uh, I kind of have to do that with online quizzes. What I'm trying to do is keep you from using Chegg, keep from working together. Um, not a foolproof scheme, but again, you're supposed to be doing your own work on quizzes. Uh, please don't use Chegg. Please don't work together. And I'm trying to make it difficult to do that anyway. That's for online. It's not my favorite way of doing it, but if you'd like to do the quiz, any problem in any order, just take it in person. In terms of how this class is offered, this class is offered in the full Hyplex mode. What that means is you can take the class any way you like. You can take the class in person. All students are welcome to attend the class in person. Even if you signed up for online, there's plenty of space for it in class. You can live stream the class. All classes are live streamed on Zoom. You can take the class online. All lectures have been recorded and posted on YouTube. How you take the class is completely up to you and you can change how you take it on a daily basis. I don't really care. You can also take the quizzes any way you like, in person or on Blackboard. Uh, again, in person, you can work the problems in any order. On Blackboard, it's random order, no backtracking, which is a real disadvantage. But again, I kind of have to do that to make it harder for students to work together. And legal stuff. If you have any special needs, let us know. We'll accommodate you for academic honesty. The point behind that is the stuff you learn in electronics, you're going to use. You're going to use it in electronics too. You'll use it in senior design. You'll use it in embedded systems. You need the material. If you learn how to get through the class, or you figure out how to get through the class without learning anything, please don't. You're going to need this material in later courses. You'll need this material when you graduate. It's better to learn it in class than when you're on the job and your career depends on it. If you're a veteran or student soldier and you need accommodations, let us know. We'll, we'll handle it. And attendance. Attendance is required. How you attend is up to you. You can attend in person. You can live stream on Zoom. You can watch the YouTube videos. Your pick. 
as long as you can do the homework, I'm good. So that's electronics, kind of a fun class where you learn how to, basically how to interface microprocessors to the real world. Um, with that, we'll be able to move on to the first lecture, which is a review of circuits one.